some more Kentucky statistics. So we're the number one fast growing prison, number one for child death and child abuse cases, number one for the amount of cancer deaths, number one state with the poorest mental health, and number one state for tooth decay. So, you know, we're number one, we're number one, right? So, so don't get me wrong, I'm living in reality in order to fix the situation. I'm pointing out the problems in order so that somebody will fix them. I don't think I'll be able to solve all the world's problems, uh, so don't attack the messenger, but by at least saying something about them, I'm doing my part. We also have, we got lots more failing statistics, okay? So, we're the second worst state for the poorest physical health, so we're fat. 31% of our adults are fat, and 37% of our kids are fat, so at least 3 out of 10 of the adults are obese, and then almost 2 out of 5 Kentucky kids are obese. So 25% of Kentucky kids are uh, impoverished, and 37% of our kids are fat. So we're the second worst state for poorest physical health. We're number 10 in air pollution, so we got lots of air pollution. Lots of Kentucky coal just in our lungs. Uh, they're not giving us the electricity. We don't benefit. Uh, it's our coal. It's Kentucky's coal. Our electricity should be free, especially since Tesla had uh, the plan for free energy over 100 years ago. So the coal, King Coal should have a long time ago figured out how to give Kentucky free energy. We're number nine in the most work-related deaths. So people are dying to our deaths. You go to work in the factories. You go to work out on a farm. You go to work as a bus driver. You dying. You getting killed. Most work-related deaths is number nine in Kentucky. So the top ten list for that number eight with the number of premature deaths. We're number eight with the most amount of premature deaths. The central litmus test for a society civilization level is the child mortality rate. If we can't raise our children, if we can't get our children to be born and to raise them up to be productive members of society, then we're failing as a civilization. That's the point of civilization, for the next generation to get better, for everybody to be able to work better and more harmoniously. That's the point of civilization. Civilization, yeah, I think Kentucky should try civilization sometime. Sometime we should try civilization. Where where's the civilization been? It's absolute anarchy here. Number eight, with the most cardiovascular deaths, so you got the obesity and you got the smoking and you got the drinking and you got the meth heads and now you got people with cancer and now you got people with heart attacks, cardiovascular deaths, people's hearts are exploding. Their hearts are exploding and they're dying. Number eight, top ten list. We're the sixth fattest state. The sixth. Uh, I already told you the, the stats on the fat with 37% of the kids, 31% of the adults, but we're the sixth fattest state in the union. In the, out of all 50 states, Kentucky is the sixth fattest state. So how do we have all this poverty and all this obesity? So, you know, they, they, I guess we're not like third world countries where people are starving to death. Even the poor folks seem to at least, I guess I'm putting it on poor folks. I'm assuming the poor folks are the fat ones, but I guess it could be anybody. Um, I've seen a lot of wealthy people fat. So, yeah, so six fattest state. We're the number one for animal abuse, which is another number one that I forgot to mention. Number one for animal abuse. Uh, we're also high with elder abuse and domestic abuse. Uh, we're number one with child deaths in child abuse cases. So we're, we're beating up our pets, we're beating up our mothers, we're beating up our grandmothers, we're beating up our cousins and aunts and uncles and children and chickens and dogs and really everything. Anything that's uh, available, a Kentucky is beaten up. KSP, the Kentucky State Police, there's a picture that came out with them at, the, uh, at a cockfight. So even the KSP is going to cockfight. So we, we have no sense of morality or justice or humanity. We, we put these animals together to fight for our amusement. It's like the gladiators, right? We like to see uh, live animals claw each other, sell, claw themselves to death. And if you, ever, you know anything about a cockfight, you know how ruthless they can get. The cockfight's got two ro roosters, and they tie a string around the rooster's legs, both of the rooster's legs, and they throw it over a string so they're hanging upside down. So, you know, they're hanging upside down by a string and, it, you know, it's like on top of this and the, the chickens are all on this side and then they, you know, they fight against each other while they're just on the same string. So they keep on like bouncing back and forth before they throw them over on the string and have them fight each other upside down, you know, they're hanging upside down, they take a claw 
uh, they put these metal claws on their on their claws, so that way that when they strike at each other, they actually inflict greater damage. And they're upside down, so they don't know what's going on. They're just randomly clawing and clawing and clawing until one of them dies. The Kentucky State Police, the KSP, they uh, they one man was in uniform while he was watching one of these shows, uh, one of these entertaining blood letting shows. And, and another thing with about animal abuse. Jeffrey Dahmer started out by killing the neighborhood kittens. He went around killing the neighborhood kittens, and that bloodlust wasn't strong enough for him, and he moved on to human beings. That's where you get the bloodlust from with the animal abuse. When you're beating up the pets, you see a kid beating up the pets, you, you, you stop them, unless you want, don't want them to have a heart. Uh, that's, that's the making of a serial killer right there, if you see your child beating up animals. That's the making of a serial killer. Put a stop to that. So um, uh, we got a lot of fat people, and that's actually increased uh, uh, substantially since 1990, 10%. So we've actually gotten fatter. Um, the number of obese people in Kentucky has tripled in just the last 20 years. So the biggest ones, the biggest indicators, I, I believe, are wealth, health care, and education. Those are the three main Issues that Kentuckians, all, anybody that has any progressive campaign should be focused on and just nail 100%. And that's health care, education, and poverty. Uh, Kentucky is 44th in the United States for wealth. So Kentucky is poor. Kentucky is 41st in overall health, the 41st, right? So we're number one for cancer, number one for cardiovascular deaths. And we're the 41st in overall health. So that means Kentuckians are sick. Kentuckians are poor, they're sick, and 40% of us don't know how to read. We don't know how to read. And we're 47th in education. So Kentuckians are dumb. By the first grade, if you don't learn how to read by the first grade, you have a 20% chance of dropping out of school. Well, how they teach you in school is K through 2 through second grade. They teach you how to read, and then the rest of the time they teach you how to read to learn so they teach you how to learn to read k through second and then the rest of the time you're in school you're reading to learn that's what you're supposed to be reading for and if you don't even know how to read then how are you acquiring knowledge you're just listening to whoever tells you what to do but if you read a book and if you actually study the stuff for yourself that's self-education and some of the greatest uh, minds and some of the richest people were self-educated you had Albert Einstein in third grade. His teacher says that he would never amount to anything. You had Steve Jobs and uh, Bill Gates who dropped out of college. So those folks were, um, they said no to the traditional methods of education. They become multimillionaires. Uh, you had Abraham Lincoln who was self-educated by candlelight. Uh, Abraham Lincoln out of Kentucky. He was born out of Kentucky in while he moved to Illinois when he was relatively young, knowing where you're from, knowing from the place of origin that you're from, I'm sure you still have some affinity towards that place. I got affinity to Covington, and actually more so since I know that uh, the group servers actually built St. Elizabeth South. All the babies that the group servers and the Germans in Sanford Town were having built St. Elizabeth South. St. Elizabeth South is a very group server uh, institution. Especially if you look around the street names, it was named after many of the original uh, pioneers, uh, original Grip River pioneers. Bernard Street, Catherine Street, um, I want to say F. Frederick, Ferdinand, Ferdinand Street. I, I'm not sure, but there's three names, Bernard, Catherine, and another name uh, at St. Elizabeth South. So I was born in Covington, but I, I didn't. I grew up in Gent, you know, so they drove to the hospital, had me in Covington, and I went back actually um, in Boone County for a year, and then after living on Camp Ernest Road for a year as a baby, then I went to Galton County, so uh, in Warsaw. It was actually Jit, Kentucky is the mailing address, so right on the border of, of Galton and Carroll County. So the um, I have affinity towards Covington, even though I do not love it. So Abraham Lincoln is from Kentucky. During the Civil War, he realized the importance of Kentucky. Uh, he says he hoped to have God on his side, but he must have Kentucky. So Abraham Lincoln, you know, was self-educated. And Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was a slave who come up out of, uh, a self-educated slave who came up out of slavery, out of the worst parts of slavery. Um, you know, this is before the 1950s and wrote so eloquently that nobody could ever question his intelligence. And he wrote really well. 
his uh, what I gained from Frederick Douglass, a lot of things, just his courage and conviction, but also the fact that when he was um, how his master was going to uh, oppress him, and he wasn't going to teach him how to read and write. And as soon as he heard that if that he was taught how to read and write and how to be educated, he wouldn't be content to be a uh, house Negro. That's when he realized that he needs to learn how to read and write. And he says when he learned how to read and write, that's when he gained freedom. I feel the same way. Reading and writing is how I gain freedom. When you learn and you gain a lot of information in your brain, you did gain self-confidence and you cannot ever accept a enslaved or undignified position ever again. So the big thing is Kentucky is poor, sick, and dumb. Kentuckians are poor, sick, and dumb. Not all of them, but a substantial amount to make it worrisome. Poor, sick, and dumb. Poor, sick, and dumb. Poverty. One out of 25 children, or 25% uh, of our kids are poor. One out of four. Uh, we're sick. Uh, we're, we're, being, uh, we're going to the hospital too much, so we don't even know how to go to the hospital right. Um, but we're sick. We're number one for cancer. We're number one for cardiovascular deaths. We're dying of heart attacks. We're dying of uh, different, you know, lung cancer, colon cancer. We're dying of lots of cancers. And, uh, you know, and, and we're fat, so we're the second poor state for poorest physical health. So we're poor, we're sick, and we're dumb. One out of, uh, or two out of five Kentuckians are illiterate, or they read at a fifth, or at a kindergarten level. And this is from 1999 numbers. The Paul Patton Task Force uh, did a study on it. No, there's been no study to uh, undo a theory. Scientific theories apply until it's contradicted, until it's thrown out. And so the the prevailing wisdom the, is that there's a lot of illiteracy in Kentucky and the fact that we have low education standards the fact that there is a culture of ignorance in this state I've seen it I've heard it I've actually heard um, unfortunately some of my relatives would say that uh, I'm a farmer I don't need how I don't need to learn how to read <laughs> just like that I don't, I, I don't what do I need them books for books are stupid well, no, books are stu or not stupid. You're stupid because you don't understand what books can do. And, yes, you can learn how to farm out of a book. I got several farming books. Give me a plot of ground and I'll show you how to farm. So, Kentucky is the third highest state for having the most smokers. Um, and in the 61st district, the district I had run in northern Kentucky, we're number one smoking and smoking-related deaths. So, we're like number one of number third highest. So, we were really high in a state that's high. Uh, so we're among the worst of the worst. We're the fourth highest state with binge drinking, which is remarkable since 70 of Kentucky's 120 counties are dry. So we, <laughs> we're uh, the fourth highest state, the fourth highest. These are really high numbers. The third highest state for the most, uh, having the most smokers, smoke-related deaths. The fourth highest state for binge drinking. So, and, and 70 out of 120 counties are dry, so we definitely have a strong legacy of moonshine in here, and of uh, backwoods, um, you know, uh, uh, underground markets, you got the, you know, the J Drew Thornton, the cocaine titan out of Lexington, Kentucky, and then you've got uh, John Robert Boone, who's out of Marion County, Kentucky, was the busted for the largest, um, largest marijuana bust in, sh in history, so John Robert Boone. So we got problems. We got so many problems. Uh, we're drinking. We're smoking. We're having heart attacks. We're getting cancer. Uh, we're getting fat. We're getting obese. We don't know how to read. We don't uh, know how to make sure our children are safe and they're not being beat up until they die. Our animals are getting beat up. So not only are we poor, sick, and dumb, but we're also drinking and smoking until we get fat. Our teeth fall out. Our hearts explode. And until we get cancer and die. So we got problems. Yeah, we got, we got so many problems. Um, but instead of being proud of our back, backwards ways, instead of being proud of this culture of ignorance, we need to have a pride in science and we need to have a, a culture comp, an explosion of uh, culture. Kentucky has lots of tourist attractions. They, they're the bluegrass state. It's got lots of trees and woodlands and... Uh, farmland and it's a really scenic spot we can make money by being a tourist town there's a lot of good ideas from which way we can write these backwards ways of the bluegrass up we can write the wrongs of the bluegrass we've had the same problems since the beginning frankly um, we, when we were uh, just squatting on other people's lands the second governor made us anti-squatters law and allowed people who were squatting to continue to squat 
there's a couple more stats, and I, I feel like I probably will talk, be able to talk for another 15 minutes. So, uh, more to come. Occupy. Kentucky. Let's stand up to the powers that be. Peace.